The Family Search mobile app has a lot of cool features that you need to be using. And today we're going to give you an overview. Coming up next. Howdy, I'm Devin Noel Lee with Family History Fanatics, and we want to dive into the Family Search mobile app and some of the cool features that you definitely want to check out. So let me get out my phone. Now the one you're going to see is a mobile device and there are a few minor differences between the Android platform and Apple. To see some more of the distinctions, I'll make sure I drop a link in the description to the Roots Tech um, review of the cool features that you're going to see. But many of the features will be very similar. Let me tell you all about them. So we are on the mobile device and when we go, there will be um, dots, but we have right there those three dots at the top. And I am gonna go actually to settings first. When I click on settings, I am gonna get the fan chart on my phone. Many of you know at Family History Fanatics, I love fan charts. In fact, the Family Search folks gave me a fan chart shirt. I really love him. So now we're in the fan chart. We can zoom in and see the fans that we're looking at. Our central person there in the middle, and then a couple of rings of ancestors, and then children. If you click on those bars, you can go from the left to right. But let's say you want to switch and make Emma Virginia Townsend the central person, then it, it, it isn't really easy, but I'll show you how to switch to see her fan chart. So what you have to do, let's go back. You have to click on the person's name you want to switch to the central person. And then you want to go and go to the icons that are up at the uh, top right. And then go to view this tree. And now, now we're looking at Emma Virginia Townsend's tree. So that's how you navigate on the fan chart. Now, one of the things that I like to do here is to look at map my ancestors. So it's a new cool feature that's here on Family Search. So with map my ancestors, I can see where my ancestors are around the globe. I had some that were from the um, English area. I have one over here in Turkey. I have no idea who that is. If I click on that, it tells me death of Maryland. So that means not that that's an actual place. It means there's something I need to go and fix. So if you see some a little unusual, then you have to go to your tree to fix it. So I'm gonna go back and then I can come over here and I can see where people are located. So I can see that I have um, some of my ancestors, Itham or Comfort, and um, he's from Canada, Canada, and so really he should be uh, over here in the map, that North American part, but Canada was part of England, and so that makes sense as to why some of the dots are over there. Um, go back. <laughs> and then I can also see, go back. I have my William Anderson, who is from Sweden, and uh, you have this birth fact there. And I could go back, and I just really have some fun seeing where everybody's located. So I have eight down here in this um, Baden area. They've got um, two over here, and those are the um, Bayern or Myasu. And then you've got, um, this is the Shafleys. That looks good over in Switzerland. So it's really fun to go around and see where your ancestors are um, on a map. So play with that a little bit. If you have, tell me what you think. Are you really enjoying it? Because I know I am. So if you're loving the map feature, say love map feature in the comment section. Another really cool thing that I like to see here that it's new to Family Search. This came out just recently, and that is my contributions. So I like to see how much I have done on the Family Search family tree. So in 2002, Family Search 
um, familysearch.org and the One Tree concept came into existence. And you can see I went hog wild making contributions to the tree. And then I kind of declined since then. Um, there was a lot to clean up. There were a lot of sources that I was putting in. Um, you can see that I've added over 16,000 sources. Uh, really excited about that. And so far, a little bit in 2020. Um, don't get disappointed in your statistics because why Why was there so much so long ago? Because there, I was finding so many discoveries. I didn't have a YouTube channel. There's a lot of reasons why there was so much that I did at the beginning and there's so few now. Just look at how much you've been able to contribute. Um, memories, these are photos, documents, stories, um, audio clippings. I really have enjoyed doing that. And then the number of people that I have created on the Family Search Family Tree. If I wanna look at the changes I've done, then here's a list of the people I've been working on lately. And then I'm not gonna show private persons. That's for you to explore later. All right, so another thing you could do is family history activities, in-home activities, all about me. This is where you can do compare a face. This is always kind of fun. So you're gonna click on compare a face and this is actually gonna take you out to the website. You'll have to sign in again. So we're gonna discover who I got my good looks from. So here's a previous photo, but I'm gonna take a new one right here. Take a photo. Practice the, doing a good selfie. And let's see who Family Search thinks I look like. Well, there you have it. I look like my uh, third great grandfather, Heinrich Zemstein, who left um, Bayern, Germany, and moved to Ontario, Canada. Um, I also like to think that I look like my dad, and they think I look like him about 50%. Now, try it with, us, with glasses on and glasses off. It might be hard to take a picture of yourself with no glasses on if you're almost blind like me. But um, here's also my grandmother. A lot of people say like, look, I look like that grandmother. And then my mother, and then my other grandmother. So it's kind of fun to see what your percentages might be. So that's one cool thing. To, but it's not on the Family Search app, but you can access it from there. So since a lot of these um, activities are actually gonna be over on the Family Search website, I'm gonna play around a few more cool features I want you to know about. Nessage, did you know that you can contact other users on Family Search? Well, we're gonna click on Messages and you're gonna be able to see some of the people and the, um, who have contacted you and what they've been able to contact you about. Um, one little hint that I wanna give you if you are using the message system, then be sure to include as much detail about your research as possible. I recently had somebody contact me about Vincenzo Bushi. Well, I'm not entirely sure how they contacted me through the app, um, but they didn't include the personal ID number. When you use the app and you're on a particular person, then you can send a message, and I'll show you that in a second. If you don't use the app in that way, then tell somebody some additional identifying pieces of information like the birth date, the location they're from. Give a little bit of extra detail so people don't go, um, maybe I worked on them. I'm not entirely sure. So let's go and see how you can send messages on the app to somebody who's researching. So let's say that you, while you were using the Family Search app, you came across somebody who was making changes on your tree. So let me come down after my recent changes. I made a lot. So here's a, a something that was connected. Dawn Twinig. She made a um, a uh, change to the family tree. And a couple of things I can do is, it looks like she's my 10th cousin, and I can click view relationship, and it will show me, oh my gosh, look, straight up the Marvin line, and down the Marvin line, that's way cool. All right, so that's how she's related to me, so remember to be nice to your cousins, y'all.
Okay, so I can click on her and I can send a message. And this is what you want to use when um, you're sending messages to other people. Right there at the top, it says about Elizabeth Ann Culp, and it has the address, and it will actually extend to the PID, the personal identification number. So you can then go ahead and type, you know, type your message. And then when you hit the little send button, which I'm not going to use because I actually want to send her a good message, um, <laughs> you can then send that message within the app and then they will know who you're talking about because the about line will tell you exactly who we were referencing. So be sure to use the message system app to talk to people and find out who your relatives are. One final thing. When you are looking at one of your ancestors, there are a couple of screens that I want you to get familiar with. They're very similar to the uh, Family Search website, but they're slightly different here. And then in a future video, I'm going to tell you how to research using the mobile app. It's a little bit different. Some things I actually like better. So let's go ahead and give you a quick overview of the screens you're looking at. So the first one is details, and that's gonna be the vital information, any additional facts that you've added, such as I've added that he was a professor. And when you click on those additional information, look, it gives you a map. So you can see where things are taking place, kind of fun. And then you can have notes and a life sketch. Um, the life sketch, you can put anything in here that you want in the life sketch. Oops. Edit life sketch and says professor. So I was able to go ahead and add a few more details about my ancestor in this life sketch. And what's really great is you're trying to give a little bit of detail so people know that when they go to Robert Victor that he was 5'8", you know, just fun little facts that you might want to use to help distinguish your ancestors from. If you have longer stories, go ahead and put that in the stories section of the memories. But Go, um, I often use this to help differentiate people with the same name, I'll put some identifying pieces of information, and that way myself and other researchers can know a little bit about him. So the next screen is going to be spouses. If your ancestor had multiple spouses, they'll be listed here with the marriage date and the um, children information. If you ever need to add another child, you can do it from this screen. Add in the information and you'll be able to click save. Remember, Family Search will always look to see if that profile is already in the family tree because we're all working on the same tree. And you can do the same thing with an add a spouse below. Click on parents and then you have the parents, their marriage information and siblings. You can add additional siblings, and you can add additional parents. But sources. Nothing in genealogy should be believed unless you have a source to back it up. So here we have a list of the sources that we have found or other researchers have found for Robert, and we can click on those, and we can explore the information. Here's an index to that information. And then you can also view the image from your screen. Now, depending on where you are, the load time is going to take a while. These are large files. So be mindful of that when you're trying to use your data, but you can zoom in. I'm using my to zoom in and move around and access that document. Memories. This is your memories section. And from here, you can go ahead and add memories. You can add a photo without add, having to go to the memories app. So go ahead and give that a try. And then there's charts. Now, if you click on these charts, it doesn't take you back to that tree view or the photo tree view. These actually download charts to your devices. So if you want to print from your device to a printer, you can do that. Um, just wanna keep you aware because I keep trying to go back to the fan chart from here and it doesn't work. So don't make the mistake I did. So that's about all of the things I want to give you an overview of when you're using the Family Search mobile app. If you have any questions, be sure to check 
uh, the comments section and let me know what questions you have. And if there's any feature that you absolutely love, I want you to go ahead and put it there. As a reminder, this is Family History Fanatics where we help you understand your DNA, climb your family tree, and write your ancestors' stories along the way. Be sure to check out the top playlist for more videos about how to use family search and the bottom video link for our newest release.